Satire is dead, and so is literacy, but not your ability to draw. This isn't going to be easy, and this is short because you won't pay attention for very long. So here's some food for thought. Don't pressure yourself. This is actually complicated because of the layering that it takes to complete it along with the effort to make sure that everything looks correct. So double over your work and take breaks if you need to. This can help you if you feel stuck or frustrated, along with taking the time to figure it out and working to the best of your abilities, even if it doesn't go the way you wanted it to, you'll get through it. Now let's get started. You'll start by doing the basic build-up sketch for a character drawing, the usual head, neck, and chest area. The neck isn't drawn because the distance between the head and chest will vary. A good hint is that the neck is as long as the face would be from the eyebrow to the bottom lip, with some room for leeway, which are the two lines above the center line and halfway through the line on the bottom of the head, or, if that isn't easy to gauge, the bottommost line. The chest is as big as the head is stacked one and one half of itself, and its width being one and one half to one and a quarter of the head. This can and will vary, keep that in mind. The right will be drawn in a similar manner but with squares rather than circles since some methods work better than others for some people. The same ruling will apply but with slightly different gauging by taking the top centering line and the halfway point of the bottom centering line or the bottommost line once again. And the chest will follow the same principle that was demonstrated prior for the left reference. Now with the depicted models, this might work for you. And even with another depiction, this might even work too but I'm going to use the first one for the rest of the tutorial because of personal preference. Same with the showcase. The one on the left will be feminine, while the one on the right will be masculine, as with their stylings. The one on the right will be a more simpler design, while the left one will be more akin to semi-realism. Now, on to the sketch. Personally, I feel I didn't depict this correctly, but the major differences are the shaping of the skull, eye socket, and ribs. The feminine will have a more rounded shape throughout, the eye sockets being slightly larger, and the ribs having a more obvious coning shape to them. Also, another hint if you're having trouble getting the distance on the teeth right. The area where the teeth will be is about the same length as the top of the eye is to the bottom of the nose. Where the cheekbones are is where the mandible will connect. It is about one half in width and three fourths the length of the skull depending on angling. The sizing is proportionate to the skull and will be done for both. Now, to make this more clear than it is depicted, the spine will have 19 vertebrae, seven for the neck and 12 that will make up the rib cage. And when it comes down to placing the sternum, place it below the eighth vertebrae and center it to the middle of the jaw, to which then this will make drawing the rest of the rib cage easier. There are 24 ribs to draw in total, 14 of them will be connected to said sternum, and 7 of them on one side will be more visible than on the other. The 6th and 7th ribs have a small bridge connecting them, along with some spacing between them and the section of the ribs that would connect to the sternum, with 3 ribs hanging off of the 7th, and 2 free-floating on each side. Now, for what can be done for the masculine one is making it so that it would be less rounded on the skull, the eye sockets are once again smaller, and the coning on the rib cage isn't as subtle, it's more obvious. For the masculine's ribs, 12 of them will be connected to the sternum rather than 14, with the 7th being offset instead of parallel, along with the next 3 ribs and the free floating 2. I didn't draw it correctly in the sketch, so there will be a correction later on. The collarbone will connect slightly above the first rib and follow its curve and end at the edge of the rib, bow slightly, then continue for about one half to three quarters of its original length. The shoulder blade center will connect on the third rib. Above it, the top will reach around the second rib and the bottom of it will end around the sixth rib. The area where the arm will connect into is about the size of two ribs and has a small bone that will hang off of it and attach to the fourth rib. The edge closest to the spine will curve and end halfway on both sides. Now, we'll move on to the final line art. The teeth and nose area are two points that I feel need some explaining. The nose has dimension to it, on both the inner and outer sides, that usually isn't drawn, and the outside having slight edges around the bridge and sides. Both will have an imaginary 32 teeth total, and depending on the angling, it will make some of the teeth more visible than others. But, to make this easier, so where the nose is centered, one side will have 8 teeth drawn on both the top and bottom row, and on the less visible side, 2-3 to three teeth can be drawn. The distance between the top row of teeth and the nose is about twice the size of the tooth that will be drawn, and the bottom row being a little over 3 fourth of the size of the top. With slightly different spacing, the detailing on the teeth is a little over the length.
The vertebrae have these small spurs on the side that would attach to muscles in the neck. Usually when these are drawn, they are either drawn weird or not at all. And this is no different. Good thing. Because you only have to draw them above where the ribs connect. Then the ones that connect to the ribs are three times the length of the ones drawn earlier. The socket has some detailing on it being that there is some ribbing on the top and sides along with where the usual spot where the optic nerve would flow through is closest to the back of the socket on the side closest to the bridge of the nose. When I was drawing the ribs, some of you might have noticed the mistake I made while connecting them to the spine is that I messed up alignment of the ribs on the left side. I did notice it, so I thought if I got the rest right it would be a small correction. It wasn't. So, this is how it came out, and this is how it's supposed to look. The feminine one follows the same principles as the masculine, but the detailing is supposed to be more subtle throughout the drawing. One major change that I would have done was making the texturing look porous rather than look like sketch lines. The shading on the sternum and ribs are done like this so that it would take less effort for me to do later corrections, which would come down to reshading the spine and ribs closest to them, along with the softer shading between the ribs and sternum. And the final tweaks to make it look more complete, along with doing the reshade on the skull because it didn't really match, and doing the shadows and the eye sockets on both of them. And that's how you do it. I could have done something for the pelvises, but if you do look it up, there are massive differences between both a uh, masculine and feminine pelvis, and if you're still struggling when it comes to looking for more references, I would suggest using Sketchfab, which was one thing that I also did use for this. I will tell you be wary, because some people who did the differences between a male and female skeleton didn't really do an accurate difference, especially when it came down to like a lot of more subtle things. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful, and I really don't know what else to say. <laughs>